Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to begin by looking at the tech tree as uh, we haven't done that in a while and we've got 1037 science to spend so let's take a look at that. We've got a lot of funds too, 2 million. And so, well the thing is we have to figure out which technologies we already have unlocked so actually let me back out for a sec and check construction time to see which technologies we are already working on so I don't have to unlock them again. Space exploration, basic solids, short-term habitation, mature solids, mature capsules. Okay, space exploration, so it's right here. So we are unlocking this already, right? Yeah, and we're unlocking this and I'm going to have them show up as... Oh wait, it's got that problem where Hmm. Um, if we go too far ahead, I can't really unlock them. But the, the state of our tech tree is like this, for those who don't know. So we've made a lot of progress in terms of engines, and I don't think we need to focus on that too much. Um, solids, obviously, we've got some queued, so we'll fill that out a bit. Flight, haven't really done that much. Um, maybe we can... Uh, oh, it's not letting me click anything now. I'll back out and back in again. One thing I would like is better Hydrolox engines, well, better RL-10 specifically. Right now, they're limited to a burn time of 7 minutes and 50 seconds, and we saw previously that they're not exactly reliable. So, um, it doesn't really state that this improves reliability of them, but I assume that that would be a good thing. So, let's research, well, okay. Let me back out, and we'll back in again and research that, and uh, start researching flight stuff. Effective space planes. Okay, okay, so we have to go through here. All right, uh, prototype space planes. Okay, so we, we might be doing space plane things eventually, which seems reasonable. Advanced flight control. Well, Apollo docking system. Right now we only have a fuel sort of docking system. I guess we could have a nice big one. And a better guidance unit. Well, it's not really better. The Saturn instrumentation units will probably hold us over for an extended period of time. This is all non RP0. So that's basically a useless node except for what it gives us afterwards, which is also non RP0, except for that thing. And it links to this, which does have some useful stuff. Oh, the seismic accelerometer isn't uh, RP0, huh? Oh well. Anyway, uh, let me just get that. Alright, that's enough uh, science purchasing for one session. So we've got a bunch of stuff that we're going to be trying to unlock. That's a lot. And I think our upgrade points should go specifically to R&D at this point. I'll get to 1.2 science... Oh, come on. 1.2 science per day. So that's where we're at. We still got plenty of funds, but I want to see what kind of contracts we have to do. Uh, fly a single person lunar orbital mission. At least one Kerbal. Um, lander splash down on Earth. Well, well, we'll be doing that. So I, I still haven't given up on the whole... Well, it's only 347 days though. Jupiter flyby. Uh, let's get some transfer windows up. Okay, so Jupiter flyby could be a thing. Except I don't know about our comm situation. Whether we have a communication device that can reach that far. Well, let's take a quick look at that. For communicating as far as Jupiter. Purchase. And it doesn't say it's non-RP0, so hopefully it's okay. All right, so we have a dish. Okay, uh, Jupiter flyby. All right, we are we are going to aim for that. So that will be a thing, and we'll try and use the smallest rocket possible. Then there's position satellite in stationary orbit of Jupiter. Specific apoapsis and periapsis. Keep line of sight with Man Manley's memory. Okay. That seems complicated. Have a biological sample on the satellite and barometer. Very lucrative. 
and long duration. Sure. I think this is a thing that we should try. Yep. So our next phase will be doing some Jupiter stuff it looks like along with other things. Alright, so here we are with the Kelly 3 Uncrewed. So this is a special uncrewed variant that we'll be testing with. And we will be able to get all the way to a lunar landing, but we won't be able to return from the moon with it. But the return portion we've sort of tested already with the previous missions, so we're pretty confident on that part of it. It's just a matter of getting it there and not toppling over. And, of course, that means that uh, we could potentially use this as a vehicle that the Kerbals could come back in should they land on the moon, have an issue, and need some other way to get back. But we would have to land the other mission close to this one, wherever we leave this one. So that's the idea. And the reason that I can't return on its own is because the controller is on this portion, the Thor AVIX unit, and uh, up after that we don't have any control. So that is why. Now... Well, let's take a look at all the numbers. So the goal was to make this stouter, and you can see the lander is this portion here. It's still tallish. I've put eight of these micro landing struts, and it looks sort of like this now. It's not great, but it still saves on having a separate lander and capsule, which I wanted to avoid. They'll be a bit cramped, but hey, there's a Gemini pod, and in the Gemini missions, they had, uh, they went for 14 days in one, so should be all right, right? And it does have its own communication, and uh, that's to make sure that everything is in communication all the way through this test. Um, I decided to use the Gemini lander engines here, even though they don't have gimbling, and that is because I wanted to avoid the tallness of the Asterisk engines. The Asterisk engines have gimbling, but don't have throttling. These have throttling, but no gimbling. So that's a trade-off. Alright, so taking a look at this, we have all this, and then we have the S4 stage. So this is going to have everything on a single mission. Instead of having a two-launch, uh, which is a very complicated mission, we'll have a single-launch mission, and here's the S4 stage sitting here, and we can do this because it is launching on a Nico 2544. And this has a lot of redundancy. In fact, even if we have a uh, failure of two engines at the start, uh, we would still be able to continue uh, probably more than that. Uh, we look at our thrust to weight ratio at sea level 1.48, and we've got 25 engines. Uh, well, I'll leave you to do the math, but we've got quite a bit of redundancy. And of course, four engines on the second stage and the third stage, which means that if one goes out, we should be all right. And then the RL10 stage which actually had problems as well. So, yeah, that is good. And uh, our total Delta V on the Nico 2544 with this particular payload of 87 tons is like 10,600, so we have maybe a thousand extra. So there's buffer there as well. Part of the benefit of having it all on a single launch is that it costs a lot less, 86,000. And that is partly because we don't have all of the solar panel re on the S4 stage and other accoutrement that had to do with um, making it able to dock with the other part of the mission and, and you know the docking port and just being maneuverable enough. So we have smaller thrusters now and we'll probably be launching it pretty quickly. You notice 48 days but that's partly because we scrapped the other mission. And, but I've checked before and it looked like 84 day build time in order to build this whole thing even without the scraps. So that's pretty good. I think uh, we don't have to really increase our build time anymore. Not unless we're going to build something even bigger than this. And this is almost center in five levels, not quite. Okay, so on that note, let us build. Okay, we've completed the Kelly 3 you see on the Nico 2544, but the rollout time is really long. Considering how fast our build time is, the fact that the rollout time is eight days, which, you know, the, even the Space Shuttle and the Saturn V didn't take eight days to roll out, and they sure as heck took a lot more time to build than 113 or whatever it is without the scraps. So, yeah, that's bizarre. 
It's a bit bizarre to have such a long rollout time. And dangerous for our rocket, too. But, alright, well, let's roll it out. Hmm, there was that issue with the Gemini capsule. There, there was a... Oh, right. If it's uncrewed, it has issues, doesn't it? Forgot about that. Yeah, there was a problem, wasn't there? Some sort of stickiness, unable to stage because Gemini Capsule doesn't like being uncrewed. I think we might have to reconsider this particular mission. Or maybe I should replace the Gemini Capsule with a Dummy Capsule instead. The sad thing about using a Dummy Capsule though is that we can't use this as a rescue vehicle then. It'll just have to be where it is. Though maybe I can incorporate this Thor avionics unit into the dummy capsule so that we could potentially have it go up from the lunar surface, but there's no real point to doing so. Um, okay, so here's our dummy capsule. I guess I'll make it shaped a little bit more like the Gemini capsule. And I'll have it right beside there. Yeah, sort of. There's the Thor avionics unit. And let's get the mass correct, or at least as close to it as possible. Uh, we would probably want to go over a bit, just for buffer. 2.716 is what I remember. Well, that's 2.716. So let's just verify. Oop. If we put this on here, 2.716. And if we have this filled with av gas, aviation gas, we have the same mass. Okay. Seems legit to me. Of course, our power consumption is going to be different. Uh, less, I would imagine, than what it was with the Kerbals. And that fairing doesn't seem to go on the same way it used to. And this is not reading right. The launch escape system is way further down. It shouldn't be reading at that level. I hope everything turns out alright on the launch pad. But right now... I think I'm gonna leave it be. Okay, let's accept this edit. It'll only take a day and 22 hours. Okay, that's strange. Now, it only takes 12 hours to roll out to the launch pad. What did we do? Did we replace the capsule, like, a little bit away from the launch pad? I don't get it. Why does rolling out to the launch pad only take 12 hours and 54 minutes now? Whereas it took eight hours before. Okay. Something weird has happened. Many weird things have probably happened. There's a thingamajig there. I don't really see the whole rocket on the launch pad. And for some reason I'm in the zoomed out view with 0000, zero, zero, zero there. Uh, those vectors are all wrong. And year 99, day 499, that's obviously not right. Um, and it's having a lot of trouble loading right now. Yeah, maybe I should just quit before everything explodes and uh, restart. Alright, here we are again, and let us try this one more time. Hopefully it'll work out. We've put a huge investment in this rocket, and of course it's harrowing for quite a number of reasons. Let's see. Alright, well I had tried to launch again and it froze the program again. So let me try and roll back. Maybe it was the previous rollout that caused the problem, I don't know. Something about rolling it back and editing it and uh, putting it out again. Of course now it's taking 12 hours again, which is wrong. I suspect that it's only like rolling out the edits or something. There's something weird going on here. I think maybe I'm just gonna scrap it and then try and build it again. Because something has gone wrong and the rollout time seems indicative of that. So, yeah, it's weird and I don't like doing it, but I'm gonna scrap it. Yeah. And then I'm going to build one again and see what happens. Alright, this reconstruction is going to take 21 days. It's fine, we still have time for the Jupiter mission, which should be a smaller rocket anyway. So I don't think it'll take too much time to build that rocket and mission. 
We will probably take care of the Deimos thing first and then build that rocket. Okay, rollout time is correct. Let's try it. I mean, I don't like it taking seven days to roll out, but at least that seems to be what it should take. Alright, cross your fingers. Um, well, let's warp to next morning at least. So we have daylight. And let's try it again. Alright, that seemed to be the thing. So rolling back and making edits, not necessarily the best idea for future reference. Alright, follow up, SAS on, and looks like we're ready to go. Here's 25 engines, ignition. And launch. Off it goes. Smart ASS on. For now, all engines look nominal. We can actually see all the engines here, amazingly enough. That is all 25 of them. I didn't time the launch for the moon, so we're not in line necessarily, but we could probably be fine anyway. Well, looks like all engines are running nominally so far. Count me surprised. Let's draw down at 3 Gs. We're beginning to correct relative inclination, but there'll be a limit to how much we can correct. We'll see how that goes. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Booster set. I did put a little uh, separatron at the top, but apparently not quite enough. Maybe I'll have to put two or three at the top there. Yep, not quite right. Well, all of the NK-15s performed fine. No, no problems this time. We'll move on to the NK-15Vs. Oh, well, there's one. But, set. And ignition. Alright, we have good ignition of all four NK-15Vs. And off of the launch escape system. Alright. Now one complicating factor about the costs is that with the two launch versions, uh, we were recovering the core stage, the first stage, right? With uh, parachutes and floats and everything. Uh, with this launch, obviously we are not. It gets too far out for us to do that. At least relying just on parachutes. So yeah, that is a downside and must be figured into the cost of the thing. But still, it's a fairly cheap launch. We are in space, the NK-15Vs are continuing on. About two minutes left in their burn. Okay, getting ready for second stage set. And off it goes. And ignition. And NK-19s. So far so good. Right now we have more than a thousand, well about a thousand meters per second extra of Delta V. As usual though, we don't have much time to apoapsis. This thing will have to point up a little bit more severely. Okay, getting ready to end this stage. It will have about a thousand meters per second left over, but we'll shut it down just shy of orbit so that the RL-10s can finish orbit. Okay, shut down. And a thousand thirty-seven meters per second, set. And ignition. 
Okay, six RL tens. And that's good enough. Shut down. 232, 201. And that stage will re enter. And yeah, perfect performance basically from the from the Nico 2544. If only we could get that during the actual missions <laughs> instead of the tests. Anyway, let me plot for the moon. Currently we have a 13.2 degree relative inclination. Okay, I have a plot for the moon here which gets us to 179 kilometer periapsis, but unfortunately we're nowhere near either of the nodes, so it it's gonna take about 11 days is the point and 3150 meters per second which is which is going to be marginally rough I suppose not not a huge problem I don't think but anyway it's sad that we have to take so long to get there but at least we don't have any Kerbals on board oh I really don't want that RCS and it doesn't look like these are firing it has fuel, but I guess maybe not in the right place. That's not convenient. Fortunately, since we're not planning to bring the pod back, it's got extra fuel on. Okay, ignition. And we have six RL-10s and we should be on time with the burn or close to it okay we are coming to the end of the work for the RL-10 stage and it looks like all the engines worked again so we're just racking up the the time before failure for the main mission for the crewed mission if we don't have a failure in this test mission, then I guess it's more likely that we're going to get one during the main mission? Something like that. Okay, and check that those are the asterisks. Yes, they are. Okay, we need to make sure to extend antenna now. Okay, fine-tuning with RCS. Ooh, it looks like we've got a crash course right now. Up oh, there we go. 11 days, 74 kilometer periapsis. Looks good. Sun's coming up. Our electric charge is fully... Uh, oh. Ah. I seem to have caused myself a problem. Unfortunately, um, the electric charge that we had in this portion was all in the capsule. I forgot about that. So I made sure that we had electric charge in this portion, which is our return stage. That's very important because in our previous mission we did not have that. But I forgot to add some electric charge up here for the landing. So this currently can't land on its own. Right. Well, at least we can get it over to the moon. And maybe I'll be able to rescue something there. But I really wanted to test the landing because of the issue with changing out the Astros engines uh, with the Gemini lander engines. Because, again, these don't gimbal, but they do throttle. So, it's a different sort of landing. We'd need RCS to do all the maneuvering for us, which is a bit touchy. Yeah. Well, this will just go over to the moon and be a return craft, or, I mean, well, not really, really, well, it can boost something, let's put it that way. It can boost something or refuel something if necessary. Um, let, well, we're already on our way there, so let's just assume that we want to go over there. Yep. I don't think there's anything else I need to set up with this. We've got hydrogen and oxygen boil off for the fuel cells. We don't actually need to run the fuel cells right now because we, well, I mean, we're not having the electric charge consumption from the capsule and the two crew members. 
I did add more hydrogen and oxygen to the capsule when we finally do the crewed mission. So that's the thing. But that ball off's uh, quite severe, isn't it? Then again, we're already two days out. Uh, with the crewed mission, we should be hitting Lunar SOI by now, so. Next time, I shouldn't put av gas, I should just put some fuel that's locked. Okay, periapsis is now 111, but that's fine by me. And we have a very polar orbit. That's not so fine. I need to fix that. We're not going to be that polar. I mean, if we put it in this sort of orbit, we're going to have trouble rendezvousing with anything else. Okay, 94 kilometers. And this will be a makeshift fuel depot of some sort. We should still have communication at periapsis. We'll actually have a blackout here. Unless, oh, there might be some other satellites around the moon helping out. Well, here we've got a blackout. But a brief one. And making orbit. <laughs> Okay, and shut down. 139 by 68. Not a great orbit, and we don't have much fuel left in this stage. So, I'm gonna actually, well, I'll just leave it be for now and decide what to do with it later. At least it does have communication, electric charge is balanced, plenty of solar panel for it. In fact, it also has the fuel cells, so if we really wanted to give it extra power, we could. But it seems fine here. I think the next thing to do is to take a peek at our Deimos mission approaching Mars in 26 days. And then I'll save building and launching the rocket for Jupiter next time. And it'll just be a flyby mission. And we'll see about that. But let's take a look at this Deimos mission. Okay, here we are with our Deimos probe in Mars SOI now. And we have this maneuver plotted to ensure that this stage remains in Mars SOI and provides communication help even though our main dish is here. But it could help out with this one and possibly that one. The maneuver looks like this. It's just inside Phobos orbit and it'll bring it into orbit like this. And then from that ascending node we can get our alignment with Deimos. That was the plan. And, yep, let's just time warp to the node. I really don't want to have to do the Deimos mission again. Again, it is a contract mission. So, we want to do this uncrewed Deimos landing. That's all we have to do. After this time, we could have one more chance to do it. You can see the Earth-Mars transfer window here and the uh, deadline there. But yeah, I, I really want to manage it on this try in particular. Okay, because the fuel margins are so tight, I'll manually turn it. So, SAS off. Oh, shoot. I forgot about the signal delay. Um, maybe I will let Smart ASS turn it. Not the most efficient thing, but totally forgot that I had a 12 minute delay with respect to Mars right now. Okay, let's ignite now. Two Asterisk engines, there's the Asterisk, not the Asterisk 2. I'm just going to let this stage burn out. We are in orbit. And there we go, shut down. And, okay, orbital period 1 day, 22 hours. Everything... Wait, there's some... There's some leakage. So, it's trying to turn. Don't do that. Alright. Okay, relative inclination to Deimos 15.14. But because of all the issues with the Nico 2544 replacing the capsule and then having that problem where it wouldn't allow me to launch, I've sort of run out of time. So we're going to have to do 
handle this Deimos landing at the start of the next episode. And then following that, I'm going to try and build and launch a Jupiter rocket in 35 days. So it'll have to be a relatively small rocket. We're going to have to make it very efficient. Then again, Jupiter transfers, the window is quite large because Jupiter is quite large. So even if we don't quite hit make it in 25 days, we could potentially get it off the ground in time. So look forward to that and we can also look forward to this landing hopefully. All right. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.